Okay, uh, I'm too easy. I'm be, I'll be speedrunning Halo Reach Legendary. Uh, I've got some VIPs with me on commentary today. Uh, I've got Dice. Hello. And I have Seclusive. Hello. Okay, uh, you ready for countdown? So we can start timer in three, two, one, go. Shoot down the temperature light, so keep your distance. Yes, All right, so uh, this is Halo Reach. Uh, we are not playing a Master Chief in this game, unlike a, a couple of the earlier games. We're playing as Noble Six, a member of uh, Spartan Three Fire Team, Team Noble. We've been sent to investigate this relay. Uh, supposedly, some rebels have taken it out, but we'll soon find out it was actually Covenant. Uh, we're actually going to skip most of this mission, unfortunately. All the interesting parts where we uh, find out what's happening in the story and stuff. Um, luckily, I've got Dice with me, who has found a whole lot of new strats on this level in the last 12 months, so I'll let him take you guys away with explaining what we're about to do here. Alright, so after we leave this Falcon, we're going to be going to the left instead of to the right. We're supposed to go to the right to the go to the story, um, but we're going to be skipping over the first sequence by doing a bit of parkour. We're going to jump down here, past these farm villages, or farm buildings, um, climb up this rock, and then do a jump and a crouch, and we're going to land on what's supposed to be a, a barrier. Um, it's a gate to our right. And then we're going to do a bit more parkour. And instead of entering this building like normal, we're going to be jumping up on top of another barrier, which is up on this roof. So as and this run is starting up, sorry for me to just uh, come in here. Uh, we would just like to uh, remind everybody who is just watching, this is ESA Winter 21. We are raising money for the Alzheimer Funden. Uh, links to donate if you decide to donate to this cause are found below the stream. Uh, we would also like to thank our sponsors, Kawaii Tecmo Europe, with their Neo 2 The Complete Edition, Twits and Usonic, again, for sponsoring this event. Uh, we're going to just pass it on to Too Easy now uh, with Halo Reach. Go ahead, take it away. So I've just grabbed myself a plasma pistol, and I'm going to use that to do a massive sequence break here. I'm going to uh, overcharge this out of the sky, eject the pilot, which is an assault rifle, by the way. Surprisingly enough. Uh, now I'm going to try and get myself a checkpoint so that I can use a Covenant ship here called a Spirit to kind of ride out of bounds and break through an elastic barrier. Dice, you can uh, explain kind of the physics of that. Alright, so there's a lot of barriers in this game that aren't solid. You're allowed to uh, push into them, and if you get enough force, you can push all the way beyond them. And so we're going to um, sort of sit in this Spirit, and it's going to leave the area because it's an NPC it's allowed to go wherever it wants um, but it's going to carry us out beyond that barrier oh we're out okay I didn't have a checkpoint I was really scared and that's a really tough trick we usually just restart over and over until we get that first try in full game but yeah so uh, Seclusive so you want to explain how this level usually goes yeah usually, and then what know, we're doing now <laughs> usually you're not at this part of the level already usually you'd have to fight a bunch of enemies and then help some marines and then you get like a lift over here in the falcon and then you have to wait for more waves, but instead we can just fly over here, take them out with this chain gun that's very conveniently placed on this falcon, and then just, yeah. It, it, so, it skips like five minutes doing this skip. So you're supposed to eventually get dropped off in that area, and that's why you saw Too Easy hop out for a moment there. That'll progress the mission, and then we're going to fly over to the beginning of the level to reload this area and deload that outpost again. Um, this will make the wave fight uh, instantly progress. Um, there's supposed to be two more spirit drop ships that come in and drop off more enemies that we're supposed to kill. Um, with everything deloaded, we just have to wait around for a little bit. And then we see a, a grunt fall out of the sky. That's our cue that we can go back in. Yeah. It's actually really an important <laughs> cue. And uh, we've got some floating barrels over here. Always fun. So you might notice all the trucks have disappeared. Um, along with the trucks, the doors for this outpost have disappeared. And that saves a substantial amount of time. Um, so we're just going to be waiting around for a little bit. It's a bit of an auto-scroller. And then we're going to be meleeing to delay a checkpoint. And that checkpoint's pretty important for um, right after the load. It removes a 
invisible barrier that's going to be right in front of us. It's supposed to be uh, combined with the door that's normally here. And we're through. Now this uh, fight is where stuff gets pretty combat heavy. I'm going to try and grab a pleasant pistol off this grunt. If I can get one, he has a needler, unfortunate. So now I'm going to let this zealot get away, hopefully retreat and not kill me. Otherwise I would have tried to get a quick kill on him there, but we'll have to deal with him later. Actually, you guys could explain the noob combo. Oh yeah, so you saw him use the uh, plasma pistol earlier to take out the falcon, like disable its engines and whatnot. If you hit an enemy elite, or any any enemy that has shields, it'll just take out that shield, and then you can switch to a preci precision weapon like a DMR to just headshot it. It's a pretty, pretty effective strat against elites. Very clean ending. All right, played that really safe. Pretty nice WC. Yeah. Ah, uh, five forty. That's a reset, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now we're on to Oni, and at the start of Oni, there's a massive like courtyard fight you have to do. Uh, I'm going for it. You going for it? Oh my god, he's yeah. actually going for it. He's, Let's he's, see what he's, happens. He's going for an insanely risky. And that's what happens. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, I went for it once. I went for it once. This is what you normally do. You run up here to the right. Um, there's a trigger that I can hit that can uh, make all the enemies in this area uh, retreat. What I was going to do was try and rush through all the enemies, grab an airstrike, and call down an airstrike on them, which saves about 40 seconds. But uh, yeah, too scary to go for more than once in a marathon. Yeah, it is an insanely risky strat. Also, we got two Niddlers from those Jackals there, and you actually want Plaza Pistols instead, because, you know... Yeah, I'm really having good. to use a Sniper as a backup here. I usually want to be EMPing these el Elites, but Sniper can work okay. It's not too bad. So apart from just killing enemies here, there's nothing else going on, apart from... There's a reinforcement wave of skirmishes that spawns as soon as you cross a line further down, so you'll see him, like not move into a certain area on purpose, and then just spawn kill some skirmishes. It's just pretty basic combat, apart from that. Still in a brain here. Oh! Alright, we got him. 127 uh, clear. Yeah, I'm okay, I'm happy with that, I'm okay with that. Here's the target locator airstrike thing I was going to grab and use to kill the enemies, but... We'll use it uh, to good effect later on, now that we have two charges. So in this mission, uh, turns out the Covenant, uh, they, they accidentally rolled, stumbled onto our planet. Um, similar to Halo 2 actually, with the Prophet of Regret. They, they were here looking for something completely different, but they found a human stronghold. So they've attacked a secret base in the middle of nowhere for unknown reasons, and it's our job to defend that base. So we're going to go secure the perimeter, uh, and I'm first just going to, I'm trying to go fast, so I'm going to use this EMP. To hijack this ghost and my first job is to activate an anti-air turret which will help secure the perimeter um there's a lot of enemies there so i'm going to call down an airstrike Oop, if i can get on top of this rock call down an airstrike which should make it easy for me to just drive up press the button and drive away and for you all the buttons that are coming up we're going to be hitting them through uh, walls ceilings or fences um, that's just because we're close enough, and to hit a button, we just have to be within a certain distance. Yeah, Bungie made the hitbox is huge, so makes it really nice for us. I'm gonna try cut this corner. Uh, yeah, I did the easy driving, so you're not supposed to be able to do that on Legendary. But if there's a grunt, you can just juke him uh, quite easily. And I'm be pressing another button here, and hopefully not dying. Ooh, that's getting okay, good. Yeah. Okay, and I got the button. Okay, it's a little bit finicky sometimes. Close. Another button here. Oh, there's a very convenient box I can use to jump off and hit that through the floor. And now we're actually hitting back. Uh, you can do a donation if you have any. Yes, absolutely. So we do have a few donations coming in here. Uh, Twenty dollars coming in from Dave Far, saying good luck. We also have a fifty-dollar donation coming from Nizik. Uh, who says, it took the day off to watch the Halo Reads run. Good luck. 
Thank you everybody for these donations coming through. Let's keep them coming. Sweet, you guys want to explain Hunter Skip? Uh, big sequence yeah. break coming up. So, you might remember if you played this casually, there's two Hunters in the next area that are really hard to take out because he's on Legendary. So we do a, a trick called Hunter Skip, where you are... Uh, you basically move into the area where the game starts to check if the hunters are dead before they actually exist, so it thinks that they're dead. It's we do we do this sort of well, like fundamentally that sort of uh, tricking the game into thinking that all the enemies are dead, so it advances in the next area. We do that a fair bit in the run, so you'll see it a lot. And you got it first. All right. It's We're it's in. kind of a tight trick, but yeah, you got it. I'm gonna uh, delay this checkpoint uh, so that I get at the top of the elevator, not the bottom. In Halo, you can get checkpoints, but you won't get one if you're punching, jumping, or something's shooting you. So, I'll get it here. Okay, didn't die. I'm gonna be here taking out this elite and grabbing his concussion rifle, which is uh, sort of like a grenade jump um, effect to it. And we're gonna be using it to boost ourselves up. Um, and climb it, climb this tower a bit faster than usual. We're also gonna be skipping a, a few spawns that we don't need. Hey, to we out. got them! Let's go. Nice. Got the fast conk jumps. Really happy about that. Oh, yeah, you'll see here. He's like locking onto one bench and then flicking to another target and firing without it fully locking on. But the rocket will still actually track, because when you lock onto a target and transfer to another vehicle quickly, momentarily, the rocket still will try to lock onto the second target. It's a pretty tight window, but it's a pretty neat optimization. Looks like a pretty cool ending. Oh, you almost refired that one. Yeah. I was looking to watch out for debris falling from the sky. I'm killing so many banshees, it's actually really easy to get splattered or knocked off the edge. Uh, this one better die. Okay, we're good. We're good. <laughs> I was a little bit worried. This is a solid only. I'm really happy with this. This is very nice. Noble team, long swords are inbound and ready to push. Orbital defense is standing by to take the shot. So we're coming up to the first very movement heavy level of the game. So I'll let uh, Nightfall, uh, sorry, seclusive talk about uh, <laughs> Halo Reach movement in general, I guess. Yeah, so a lot of the movement is based on your sprint cycle, but when you're not sprinting, you can maximize like how fast you're moving. That's very important for saving time, I mean, obviously. So we, we utilize a, a trick or a strat called slide jumping a lot. So when you land on a slip surface from a, like a high jump or something, you will slide along the ground a bit, and you'll slide even more when you're crouched when you land. So we basically use that slide and then jump, and it adds ah, okay, on to our spotted. speed we already have. Oh, that's unlucky. So you'll, you'll see him do a lot of slide jumps here. No, they just heard seclusive talking and yeah. <laughs> Sorry, dude. That's alright, it was a great explanation. Thanks, man. I want a checkpoint. I fell off. Can I still get one? Oh, I'm just gonna go for the screen edge jump. Okay, we should be okay. That was unlucky to get spotted there, it doesn't usually happen. Yeah. It might look like he's playing it overly safe there, but those elites really can just melt you, especially after a grenade jump. Oops. Did not mean to throw the grenade. So we teleport June there, forward, so that they all the enemies will be looking at June. Uh, my Spartan ally. Alright, we're through the hardest part of the level, luckily now. Very clean. Yeah. I'm just gonna kill this guy. Oh yeah, you might not have seen this enemy before. This is a, a Guta, a, a native creature to the planet oh, no. Rich, and this is the only time you see them in the whole franchise. Bungie nicknamed them the Donkey. Fun fact. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Another fun fact about this level is that you can run through the whole thing, basically. Uh, Bungie wanted it so that... You, we're basically here to recon what the Covenant are up to on Reach, because they're not really doing anything. They're just kind of... Well, yeah, not doing much. Uh, which is pretty curious for a Covenant Invasion fleet, right? Um, there's some militia here. We can go ask them what's happening. Or we can just run straight past. Uh, the beauty of, you know, Halo level design. I mean, you've played this game before. You know what goes on, right? You don't need to ask yeah. them. Yeah, 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 we could. We know the way to go. Um, now, there's a very 
Yeah, I'll let Dice talk about this next part. <laughs> so, coming up is a lot of walking, and then we're going to get to a, a cool trick that's probably not going to be seen here. Um, it's called Armor Lock Pressure Launching, and we can pick up an Armor Lock, and that's supposed to uh, lock us to the ground and prevent us from getting splattered by vehicles and stuff. So it provides an immense amount of downwards force. Um, if we use it improperly, we can jump on our NPC's head, and he'll act as ground. Um, and since he's not locked to the ground, he'll slide and carry us basically 20 or 12 seconds um, down the line, and it saves just so much time. But it's a really precise, hard trick to pull off. You got over that gate instead of clipping through it, but instead we're going to hop on the forklift. Uh, if you don't know about this trick, it's one of the oldest tricks in Halo Reach. It was discovered really early. Basically, there's a hole in the middle of this gate. I'm going to line my prongs up with a certain point, and uh, that was a little bit too far back. Okay, we're under pressure here because we're getting shot. Okay, we're good. Uh, yeah, so that, that was forklift clip. Um, you could do the thing that DICE talks about where you launch over the gate with an armor lock. That's only really in the aisles, but definitely check that out if you're interested. Um, you can do a donation break now. Sounds amazing. Yes, we do have some donations coming through. A lot of love from the community. We have a $5 donation coming in from Anonymous saying this cave is not a natural formation. We also have a $10 donation from Danos saying, hey. Why is hey. Noble 6 out of bounds? Good luck to Easy. <laughs> Watching at home, Thanks, rooting Danos. for you with friends. Thank you, Danos, indeed. And we also have a $15 donation coming in from Zero16. Yo, Easy. Sorry again that I couldn't commentate, but good luck on the run and make Halo Runs proud. Awesome, thank you. Shout out to Zero's uh, Halo 3 ODST speedrun uh, the other day on ESA. That was really cool. Um, so yeah, I, all I have to do is kill these two shade turrets, and then I can go to the next section. Now my pelican's coming in to bring a vehicle for me. Call this early warthog, but yeah, I can skip past this whole section. So uh, last night, we discovered what the Covenant were up to. They're just, they have a massive army, and they're just hiding in the middle of Reach's wilderness. So... We're sent in to help support uh, the, the battle that's happening down on the ground. And the best way is to take out these anti-aircraft anti guns, which are preventing the UNSC from establishing air superiority. What we're going to try and do is drive straight up uh, with a well-placed grenade and a grenade launcher shot. We can just blow up this AA gun. Or maybe two well-placed AA Maybe three. There, we got it. All right, and now we're just going to... Uh, continue on with our speedrun. This is exactly, yeah, this is exactly how Noble Six did this in the canon. Uh, that's what I choose to believe. Reminded that this is on Legendary. This is the hardest difficulty with that, like, skull difficulty modification. So he just drives up to the gun and takes it out, you know? Uh, didn't get a checkpoint, so I'm not gonna go for a bridge skip. I'm gonna hide. You can actually get the ghost over that gap with uh, some precise driving, but uh, yeah, I'm not gonna go for it without a checkpoint, unfortunately. So yeah, I'm just gonna uh, continue to this mining facility, and this is actually my favorite skip in the whole game. It's called BXR Skip, because that's the name of the facility. Just gonna do some ghost wall riding and some platforming. Honestly, Halo, when you speedrun it, it becomes a platforming game with a little bit of FPS elements, but it's a platforming game, come on. Get a checkpoint. And it's we're up on the roof. It's very important that he does this as fast as possible, otherwise the enemies will fall back and it becomes Maybe kick me. nearly impossible to progress. Okay, I had to do some really oh, weird nice. movement that I've never done before because I was very scared of getting kicked in the back. Um, but we're through. <laughs> so yeah, we just skipped that whole area by doing a nade up onto a roof. Pretty cool. Yeah. I'm gonna do a little minute here to kind of try and guarantee that uh, an enemy wraith doesn't fall off the cliff. By s if I'm not boosting when I go through that loading zone, uh, it changes the position of where the wraith spawns. I want it to not fall off the cliff because I want to use it to blow up all these enemies. Um, also, thank you very much, Bungie, so much for putting this warthog here. Because, <laughs> yeah, th this AA gun is a poor location. I can just shoot it with the warthog. Now I'm going to get back in my revy and try and hijack that wraith I prepared earlier. And it is there. Let's go. It's not off the cliff. Yeah, it is not always there, and it's very helpful to have it, because you face a number of heavy enemies here. 
So it's too uh, easy how to kill the pilot. shoot the Wraith after taking out the Grunt to sort of wake up this Wraith. For some reason, its AI just doesn't function properly. I guess that did not make it past the... Uh, oh no, we're in trouble. Quality assurance. Okay, we're good. Uh, that Wraith really wanted me. It really wanted me, but I kept moving and it just couldn't shoot me. So, yeah, we're good. And this is the one time in the game where we have to kill hunters, but luckily we have a wraith, so it becomes really easy. I think we skip every other hunter pair in the game. Yeah, we do. It's quite nice. And I'm using competitive score to help me know when I've killed enemies. Uh, sub 4? Second air gun clear? Pretty it's, nice. It's a very nice run so far. I, I can PB. <laughs> this run's super sick. Uh, knock on wood. And this is the Falcon. Oh, yes! Okay. No, no, I'm very excited to talk about this. Um, well, to have Dice talk about this. This auto-scroller, we've been trying to skip it for years, and uh, there's actually a way to do it. Um, so, I'm not going to be doing it now, but Dice, take it away. Talk about how, how we skip this auto-scroller. So, on, on easy it's possible, and mainly it's viable in co-op. Um, we have to clear out that, that group of enemies, and then we also have to clear out all of our marine allies to aggro them for a moment. And that makes um, that makes this falcon that we're riding spawn in without any allies in it. Um, we also have to keep two elites alive, or one in co-op, to hijack the pilot out, so that we can then reverse hijack and get into the pilot seat ourselves. Um, and then we then we can basically just fly to the end all on our own. Um, and if we're doing it solo, we have to then get hijacked out by another elite because it doesn't let us exit normally. Yeah. So it's a really complicated skip. It's very yeah. impressive to watch. Um, it, and it saves so much time. It Definitely check out the co-op run if you're interested. Uh, we have got time for a donation break. Uh, sorry, exclusive. Oh, uh, okay. Go ahead. That's perfect. We do love auto-scrollers. So uh, I would like to <laughs> remind everybody that with the last donations coming in, we are only $300, uh, well, less than $300 away from the 35000 mark uh, for Alzheimer funding, a truly amazing cause. Uh, definitely keep those donations coming. Let's see if we can reach that mark by the through this run, really. I would like to remind everybody we have some great incentives along the way. We have one of the best uh, bonus games that I've ever seen, the Wacky World of Miniature Golf from Big John, with a goal of $5,000. Let's see if we can meet that goal and get one of the best games uh, by the end of ESA. Let's absolutely get those donations coming in. Thank you. All right, so now we've uh, discovered this Covenant Spire deep in their territory, and we're going to go just skip all the enemies, uh, grab this conveniently placed mining vehicle, and drive straight to the Spire without killing any enemies. Uh, yeah, we do have to clear out the top in order to uh, press the button to set the... Why is there a self-destruct button on these things anyway? But uh, anyway, I'm going to go kill all the enemies now. Um, I'm going to get a checkpoint here and then go and I'm going to go for the ultra first. Throw a nade at the floor and then grab this fuel rod cannon. Kind of like a Covenant rocket launcher. And then yeah, we're done. Yeah, why is there a self-destruct button and why can a human activate it? I know, right? Well, actually, all Covenant technology is based on Forerunner technology, which humans are naturally... Okay, I'll shut up about war. Alright, uh, keep going. <laughs> I'll give you the segue. Alright, alright, alright. This is a long night of solace. Uh, this is a big sequence break here, using the same mechanics Seclusive explained earlier with Hunter Skip. I'm going to be trying to get here really fast, kill an elite, then the game will think there's nothing in the area and it'll open a door for me. But, uh, in theory, so we'll see what happens. So he's trying to get a plasma pistol here. It looks like he got a lot of them. His grunts are yeah. about 50 50 whether they spawned up one or not. So Too many is scary though because they'll melt you. <laughs> yeah, you want some but not too many because plasma pistols do a lot more damage than needlers. Yeah, classic game didn't give me enough plasma pistols. Ah, game gave me too many plasma pistols. Classic. Got this checkpoint so he can attempt to skip a few times. He needs to kill this elite within a pretty tight window. Alright. You'll notice that I First fired the uh, EMP through the, like, through the, uh, what's it called? The shell of the drop pod? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we didn't know, that wasn't possible until this game came out on, uh, keyboard, uh, sorry, computer? PC? I think, they I believe PC is the phrase. But yeah, shout out to Mankey for discovering that, by the way. I also want to shout out 
Danos, who has a world record on this level on both easy and legendary difficulties. Who was uh, like, uh, donated earlier as well. So we grabbed the uh, sniper rifle from a marine and this sword down here. We're going to be carrying it to the later part of this level. And now we're going to be switching to a higher FPS because it gives us a bit of better control over the saber. That was in a recent patch. Um, it just makes the combat here so much easier. Yeah, uh, it's due to the mouse acceleration or mouse smoothing, I believe, or something. We don't like it removed correctly because we're boomers and we <laughs> prefer for the... The saber to kind of turn slow, but uh, yeah, one twenty is a good balance. Technically, the fastest is to play on unlimited, and you just instant one eighty. But uh, yeah, I like being able to slowly move my cross there. Yeah, a lot of us are used to playing on the sixty FPS saber, which is very slow and clunky. So we can't really adjust to the new zoomy saber straight away. Uh, okay, so first wave, there's Banshees. I'm gonna do a specific lineup to try and kill them, you know, insta-kill. There's three waves, but uh, yeah, things, things can get really messy if you don't kill them all, but yeah, we'll see what happens. Scuffed lineup a little bit, but should be fine. Just gonna pre-fire to hope that some of these shots hit. Go down to the bottom wave, and then the middle wave. Alright. That's like perfect. Let's go. Second wave is also pretty nice and comfy. It's uh, Seraphs. The way I kill these is you have to... Oh, that is a Marine that took down my shields. This could get scary now. Classic. Um, as long as none of them dodge though, I'll be fine. So I take down their shields with my machine guns and then I switch to rockets and finish them off. Yeah, that's all good. Uh, yeah, this, this section is super fine un unless they start dodging. And uh, this level's also this whole level, this space segment is very infamous on MCC because it just made the Seraphs more aggressive, and it's not the way the game was balanced, so uh, it gets pretty rough. We actually use the increased aggressiveness to our advantage in this section here and the next as well. I'm going to manipulate a lot of these banshees to go a place where I want them to go, so that I can easily kill a bunch of them. But first, I'll just take out two Seraphs. With the help of Anchor 9, the space station. And I'm really low. I'm going to chill in this little tunnel to try to get my shields and health back. And then hope that I've uh, had a successful fishing. And yeah, we're good. Lots of banshees. I'm getting shot at, so that's pretty scary. I'm going to kind of book it behind cover. And 1% hull integrity. We're good. Oh, wow. Well. Never in doubt. Wow. Literally one more shot would have killed him there. We're good. It was. We had everything under control. Okay. Now, <laughs> I'm going to play things really safe. i got a lot of Banshee kills. Anchor 9's taken out the Seraph, so I'm going to uh, use my cannons on it straight away. I'm looking for Banshees, but I'm actually low, so i got to play this safe while trying to shoot Banshees when I can see them. So, and scary. Mm -hmm. Not scary, actually. We're fine. So the quota advance this wave is essentially kill all the Banshees and then a couple more Seraphs. That's why Banshees are such high targets, high priority targets. Okay, something, yep, we're good. I'm gonna try to get a checkpoint here. I'm gonna go real low, line myself up to blow up this last wave of phantoms. I got the checkpoint, thank goodness. It's important to kill these fast because you might have just heard a new wave show up of reinforcements and they will... Oh, it looks like I missed a phantom, this ain't good. Okay, it's dead. Now, once all the phantoms are dead, everything will leave me alone. I can't believe you lived that whole time. Yeah, that was so <laughs> dicey. I, that, I, I, was, I, I was not under control, guy. I, I should have died there like three times, but um, we good. <laughs> this part is a massive run killer. Like, yes, dying here is yeah, massive. not uncommon at all. Yeah, that's, that's, that's one of the hardest bits of the run down. Alright, yeah. Straight, straight shot to the end now, right, exclusive? Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> nothing, nothing can go wrong. Alright. 
So space two, um, this is another recent trick that was found by Mankey. Um, you can skip the entire dialogue about destroying the engines if you just destroy the engines before the dialogue happens. So I'm going to just YOLO some rockets at those Banshees because I want them dead. Then I'm going to go straight for the engines. Dialogue skips are very simple. The way it works is this dialogue in the game that tells you to kill the engines, but if you've killed the engines before Got it. the game tells you to kill the engines, it doesn't play the dialogue. And it makes the reinforcement wave spawn faster. And then we're just hanging around Savannah here because there are a lot of Seraphs here. There's a lot of open space, not much place for cover. But, uh, you know, there is Savannah and it does shoot at them as well. So luring them over here and then they just get gunned down. It's quite, it's quite a good ledge threat. And this is one of the moments where the increased uh, aggressiveness on MCC plays into our favor heavily. Because they want me so bad, they'll fly into Savannah uh, trying to kill me. They'll, they'll splatter themselves to death. Or, or they'll just fly straight into its gun so that they can get shot. I, I think they or just flew into, into each other. other. Oh my yeah, God. That, was, that, that one's new. That, that's definitely new. Um, uh, three Seraphs, I'm not going to risk this. Like, just going out and uh, killing them with combat. I'm going to try and bait them over here. Unlucky that they were on that side. Usually, if you hit dialogue skip, they'll be close to you because the Marines will die earlier. Uh, this, this, this is one's as good as dead. Now I just need to not die to the Corvette. And I have no boost, so that's a bit scary. But we should Very be good. Nice space too. Cheers. And I'm going to switch back to 60 FPS here. Oh, uh, let me just turn VSync off. Uh, we, we, we time uh, IGT in Reach uh, in game time, so <laughs> you can do stuff like switch FPS in the middle of the run, and it's, you do it a lot, actually, usually. So yeah, I'm just going to use a sword to kind of go Rambo on these uh, Rangers before they overwhelm me with their superior firepower. I love this threat. You just run into like six elites and just sword them all down on legendary. Dude, are you gonna drop down? Okay, Ooh. we have a checkpoint. We can try like catch him out of mid air. Yeah, let's go. He can melee you. <laughs> it happens all the time. I probably should have died there. But yeah. Nah, you, you had that. You had that. <laughs> and now I'm gonna give my Marines alien weapons, covenant weapons, because Bungie tied. Uh, Bungie wanted to make your Marines not help, so they gave them a 50% damage, damage penalty on legendary with, with their own guns. But then you just give them a Covenant gun, and they start tearing up. Another thing is that Bungie bound firing patterns to the weapon you're holding and not who's firing it. So, on Legendary, you give an ally an enemy's gun, they start firing as aggressively and with as long bursts as the enemy would fire against you. So it helps out a lot. I'm going to kill this Engineer because it shields all the... It's like a Covenant support race. It just, like, uh, shields all the enemies around it. So I'm just killing that first. Next, I'm going to focus on Needle Rifle combining these uh, grunts. If I shoot them three times, anything unshielded three times with a Needle Rifle, it'll immediately die. And that'll come in very useful later as well. Yeah, Needles have a very specific property where if you put enough Needles into an unshielded target, they will just explode and die, which is very helpful in levels like this. And the next level, you'll see it a lot. This room I is hear... also known as the... What? Oh yeah, we're good. That's alright. This room is also known as the no jump room because if you ever jump <laughs> in this room, you will like instantly know why you don't jump. There's many sniper elites, and when you jump with lo low gravity, you can't air strafe at all, and you're just a you know still a sitting duck for like five seconds straight. Yep. Not even the elite snipers. The grunts can just end you in one shot. It, it's happened to too easy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So I'm going to place this DMR in a place where I'll grab it later. I really want a Plasma Pistol, so I'm going to hope that these two Grunts spawn with one. Otherwise, I'll be in trouble. Oh, by the way, he's playing on Night Vision here because enemies have green outlines with Night Vision, and so do dropped weapons. It just makes, like, all of combat a lot easier. Like, the important things you yeah. need to find. It doesn't look great, so I apologize for that, but... <laughs> I'll try and turn it off when possible. DICE is the anti-Night Vision <laughs> propaganda police. <laughs> He's always yeah. in our streams telling people to turn night vision off because it looks horrible. Well, big so, uh, dice for, <laughs> just increase your gamma so that you can see things. But yeah, th there are definitely situations where you want that head outline, and it makes it so much easier to use a precision weapon to headshot yeah. them. If I forget to turn it off, though, dice will uh, do the thing he normally does and and uh, 
Tell me to turn it off. That's a nice spawn. Yeah, it looks okay. Where's the general? Oh, he's over by the front. Nice. He didn't get Bobby though. He's yeah, like I also a... stuck that guy instead of uh, punching him because I'm scared. You can usually just walk up to a sword elite and punch him, a stealth sword elite. But uh, yeah, I just had to stick him instead. Uh, sticking was optimal. Yeah. By the way, the spawns in this area are RNG, like Seclusive alluded to. I also found an RNG minute to get the worst spawn guaranteed. <laughs> yeah, it plagued me for like a month. I didn't realize, I didn't believe it was a thing until I got the worst spawn uh, 9 out of 13 times. So, yeah. It, he rolled a 1 out of 4 9 out of 13 times. That's a, <laughs> you know, almost basically a guaranteed minip. Yep. Can't find a minip for the, a good spawn though. Gonna do a little plasma EMP lineup there. We'll see that again on the very last kills. Yeah, hopefully. Also, uh, jackal yeah. mages. The, the jackals with the red shields, they're called jackal mages, I believe, because they're a major pain in the butt. And they're just so hard to kill with anything but headshots. Or super combines, which is what I'll be using on them this run. And you also may see me struggle a lot if I don't have any access to any of those resources. <laughs> I try new combo this guy. Oh. Okay, we're good. I want some health and grenades. This DMR I dropped earlier, and I'm stocked up on grenades, which is really nice. You want to explain this wave fight, seclusive? Yeah. So there's a you know just a six wave fight, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Six. Six waves of enemies that spawn in the exact same spots every time. There's four jackals down here, two jackals up here, and then some leads and grunts. The uh, the quotas for the waves are different, but basically, you know, as long as you kill them kind of fast, you can rock up to each wave as they spawn, like he is here. They get increasingly harder, harder. And the last wave is four ultras, which can be a bit tricky. But Wait, my nice. grenade went through the floor. Very oh, wow. cool game. Thank you very much, Bungie. We good though. It's quite unlucky. Oh yeah, surprisingly can, common. Yeah, grenades can clip through the floor in certain spots. Here's another pre-EMP. So hopefully. It's a seclusive shot. Oh, I missed it, unfortunately. Uh, it, it Sorry, man. Really cool. I missed your strat. You can just imagine what it looks like. I'm gonna lose this uh, boxing match. Okay, no, we good. <laughs> I can't believe he dodged that EMP. Uh, got a lot of people alive that really sh I wish weren't. Wait, what the hell? This is just the weirdest fight in the this world is so right now. Weird. What is like, happening? All, all of this hangar re-entry is just so odd. I got one EMP left. Okay, what the hell was that? Alright, we're, we're through. We made it. <laughs> just a bit of the control. bloom. Yeah. Yeah, Reach AI just does crazy things. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a long night of solace. I probably do a donation break. Amazing. Well, I would like I'm, I would like to take this opportunity to talk to you uh, or to anybody watching really about the giveaways that we have available here at ESA Winter Twenty One from our sponsor View Sonic. If you donate a minimum accumulative of twenty five dollars, you can be eligible for our View Sonic Elite XT Two Seven Zero monitor. And if you donate an accumulative of thirty five dollars minimum donation, uh, you can get a ViewSonic VX2758 monitor. So keep those donations coming in. You might be eligible for either either one of those two monitors. Oh, and we do have a donation coming in. $10 from DM Penguin saying, this, hey. this donation goes towards a seclusive desk slam. I wonder what the context <laughs> is behind that. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I I, uh, I get very angry on my streams and slam my desk a lot. I'm not gonna do it on this stream because you know. We would definitely not recommend so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he slams it ironically. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. It's, it's the funniest sound in the world. Oh yeah, no! Okay. DM penguin. Unlucky spawn, but I got a too easy checkpoint. I specifically went for this checkpoint in case that happened. So we good, we good. Yeah, too easy has a lot of you know passing some checkpoints here that he goes for. Yep. You see a bunch of them here and a bunch of them at the ending in very risky spots. 
So oh, yeah, so he's jump is yeah jumping over the gap here because when the suicide drones try to pathfind to him and can't like find where he is or make a good path, they just blow up. Which is very convenient for us, we're not complaining. And I'm very low on needle ammo, but I do have two stickies. So I want as much needles and stickies as possible for this next atrium clear, which I'm gonna do really aggressively. Uh, we'll see what happens. It's really important to have as many needles as possible because none of these enemies have um, shields, fortunately. So the strongest weapon here is the needler and comboing with six shots. So now I want these grunts the dead to... so that... Oh yeah, sorry, go ahead. Brutes have the tendency to armor lock when they sense danger, such as like a nade or a needle. So that's also why you want a lot of needles, because it's not guaranteed that all your needles will hit, even if you aim them perfectly or play it well. Looks like you got it pretty well, there's only one other brute, so you should mm -hmm. have this. Just playing safe. It, it's definitely not free to just, you know, rush the enemies like this and live, but it's a very nice threat when it works. Yeah. Also, you found the, like, snipering the, uh, DMRing the grunts first to stop the needles to, from going towards the A, right? I mean, I, w I wouldn't call it found, but it's just a strat. Yeah, I guess. The way to do it before was just throw the nades and pray, so... <laughs> That's an improvement on that, at least. This is an okay atrium rush, you know, I played it pretty safely. So we're going to be hitting the elevator button there to activate the next sequence, and then we're also going to be hitting an elevator button inside through that wall there. That's why he ran up to the paint paintings. And that'll save a bit of time later when this objective is complete. He'll instantly teleport into that elevator. Wish I had more needles, but we'll make do with what we got once again. Eh, you got plenty of needs. Yeah. This is the hardest trick in the game, needling this guy. And I got it, let's go. It's not actually the hardest <laughs> trick in the game, I'm just bad at it. I've seen him take a whole clip of needles and not die, so... <laughs> and you've really... needles are uh, not, you know, you need a lot of them. You also need this, this captain that's just sitting in the phantom. I don't know why he didn't want to come out and fight us, he's just kind of hanging out, but, you know... Watching his brethren just, just die. <laughs> okay, low on needles here. Might have to grab the hammer and go Rambo, but... Okay, that, that, that guy died, and that should be Quota. I really want the hammer, though. I'm not gonna get it. Very sad. The hammer, um, it's not quite as powerful for speedrunning as it is in Halo 3. You might have seen Halo 3 speedruns. But we can still use it to save a little bit of time. Especially in combination with the jetpack, which we're about to grab here. But yeah, I'm just not gonna risk going for it. <laughs> Hey, you get to the jetpack. It does exactly what it says on the tin. You, uh, you know, <laughs> fly a little bit. Oh yeah, yes. we haven't really done much with uh, armor abilities in this game so far. Just uh, sprint, sprint, sprint. But this is one of the few levels where we do... You don't have ammo? Use a jetpack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's okay, we d we're waiting for the store to open, so we only lost time, a little bit of time. You can't trade Marines weapons if it has no ammo. They're like, dude, what are you trying to give me? Like, come on. I'm gonna do a cool little nerd slide here called the seclusive slide. Yay. I hit it. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> seclusive <laughs> <Sorry>. approved. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually an achievement on MCC for beating this level without using armor abilities. Which is cool, because it's like they're, they're implying that jetpacks kind of required. Yeah. And, you know, we'll be showing how useful it is to sequ uh, get through a lot of these sequences in an unconventional way. I want to say it's kind of intended, but yeah. Yeah, this is the intended path, right? This is the this is the <laughs> when I played casually. Yeah, we just go underneath all these enemies, skip them. I'm going to try to play this part really fast because I have the plasma pistol. And it's not too much time loss if I die, but yeah. You want to explain what I'm about to do, Seclusive? Yeah, it's going to stick the Phantom, and in, when Phantoms get stick, while well, stuck, or hit by two rockets in this game, their Gunners will instantly fall off the turrets. So, and because the Gunners are the only thing on the Phantom that have a fast projectile speed, you can just shoot these grunts and fly up to the last fight of this area immediately. This is a very difficult fight, by the way, so, let's see how it goes. There are a lot of enemies. There are, like, 
12 fodder, 4 brutes, and 1 chieftain, and then also a reinforcement wave of 1 captain and brood jackals, as well as 2 shades you have to take out. It is a very difficult fight, lots of deaths here a lot of the time in oh, no. attempts. Okay, that guy killed his friend with a grenade. That's what I like to see. It's very convenient. Oh, I think he's below you. Yeah, this is not looking good. This is very odd enemy movement, but should be he should be up on, under this control. This is the big final boss of this game, honestly, but we got him. Yeah, that, yeah, that is... chieftain has so much health, and he can just one-shot you with a very fast moving projectile. But yeah, you got it. Deathless, but look, so far. Uh, not too soon. <laughs> 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 Running out of ammo, and one by red. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm going back for the DMR, man, I don't care. <laughs> I'm very low on resources, so I'm just gonna go back for my, uh... Yeah, there we go. Enough, yeah, cool. I'm not sure what your last checkpoint was either. I think it was before. Yeah, the I don't first think I got rocket. one that entire fight, yeah. honestly. Yeah, you didn't. All right, we hear the pelican coming in to evacuate all these civilians. Oh, I should talk about the law. So, yeah, we destroyed that big Covenant ship that was uh, the only ship attacking Reach, and then a uh, whole fleet turned up. Turns out that's what they were doing, kind of waiting around in the earlier levels, just waiting for their fleet to arrive. And we were kind of just trekking through the mountains for nine days while Reach was getting torn to pieces by all these Covenant. And now we're just on evacuation mode, basically. So we're trying to save as many civilians as possible. By the way, he kills that Maroon and takes his seat because in this spot, it's slightly more favorable that you live against the Banshees in this auto scroller. Yeah. Speaking of and this auto scroller, you just yeah. die. Oof. Just like. You, you can do things to like killing the banshees and stuff, but they can fire at you with fuel rod shots like out of your line of sight, and you just die. Many runs have lost have died here. I hope we get a checkpoint. We go on here if we're lucky. I think it's based upon the spawns of these two uh, brutes. We didn't get one, but hopefully we'll be okay. This auto scroller is notorious for having terrible checkpoints on legendary, and if you die on it, it's quite a long revert, up to three minutes. Yeah, super scary. I'm gonna try to destroy these, uh, this first wave of Banshees. If I do destroy all three, I can get a checkpoint, but it's completely RNG whether the third one is even targetable. Uh, we're not gonna oh, be able to get him. This chain gun also has travel time on its shots, which is rare for a Halo game. Okay, nearly got fuel rotted, but we're okay. They like to fuel rod from behind you, but you literally can't do anything about it. It can't happen right here. This is, this is the most common place for it to happen, so I really hope it doesn't. There it was. Oof. Very lucky that didn't hit us. Yeah, a couple Marines. Yep. Rest in peace, other gunner. And speaking of civilians, uh, saving civilians, we're not doing a very good job. The Covenant just have such a technological advantage on the UNSC that there's not much we can do, and uh, do you, unfortunately a civilian airliner gets shot down here. Wait, Pretty somber does? moment in the game no. story. Not the civilians! So we're going to do our best to save the rest of them that have parked, and to do that we're going to turn on these anti-air guns, uh, which will shoot at the Corvette up, you can see at the top of my screen. That's the same thing, same kind of ship we were on in LNOS. Same model as well. You can actually get up to it. Uh, Termacious tri tri Tricocity have gotten up there, I believe. I'm going to try to clear this beach uh, so I can get a checkpoint after landing. Which will be my first checkpoint for almost four minutes, I think. So I really, really want it. It would be quite nice. <laughs> the ending of Exodus here is very RNG heavy. Oh, it's yeah. Yeah, there's like Here a, it comes. <laughs> the the brutes are very tanky. You only have two rockets to take them out, and the like for the second and third buttons especially, they'll just be brutes. Okay, we got the checkpoint. You know, gravity hammers and fuel rods that can one shot you. So you just have to do your best to juke them and move fast. And yeah. do get to do some boosting here. Have to we'll get another some, checkpoint. Let's go. Some patented two easy checkpoints here. Oh work. yeah, we'll see a couple two easy checkpoints hopefully.
This is a cool firefight map as well. Except for when you're versing heretics, then it's impossible. Oh yes. Okay, I really failed to hit that gun, that grunt. There's a two easy checkpoint. Crouch behind the. <laughs> it's also the manky checkpoint in a way. Okay, we hit that button as well. Now I'm gonna hope I don't get blown up by this wraith. Pretty bad parking by me. Nicely timed though. And I'm gonna go for my favorite checkpoint in the entire speedrun on these stairs before hitting the third button. And get a very, very cheeky checkpoint down here. And there's usually a chieftain that can spawn up here, two actually. And they will just blow your brains out the moment you peek up into the room. But yeah, we're good. Very nice. It's Exodus. Uh, good time for a donation break. Excellent. We love to hear it. So, um, well, I would like to remind everybody who is watching uh, this Halo Reach run right now. Uh, we are raising money for the Alzheimer Funden, uh, which is an amazing cause. Alzheimer Funden organizes projects, camps, and events for younger uh, for youngsters affected in different ways due to parents or other relatives diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And their aim and purpose is to increase fundraising to the benefit of scientific research in order to find a cure for Alzheimer's. Uh, again, let's see. Uh, let's keep those donations coming. It's for an amazing cause. Let's see if we can reach that 35k mark. Uh, classic marathon luck. So <laughs> your, your first objective in NA is randomized. And we got the one which required us to hijack a banshee. Unfortunately, there are, there's three places banshees can spawn. And they spawned in, you know, you guess it, zero of them. I'm going to touch down in here at hospital early to get a checkpoint. Uh, and then I'm going to do my best to hijack one of these banshees that spawn a million miles away. Wherever they are. I don't see any. Anyone else? Uh, it's... <laughs> no, man. Check radar, man. Okay, I got one. I got another checkpoint too. Nice, nice. Alright, All right, finally. <laughs> so, yeah, we just need to hijack one of these things. Skyjack, more, more accurately. So, we're so going to take this mission... banshee oh, and... No, you, you you Alright, thanks. So, we're going to take this and banshee... And I flew right over a shade turret. Unfortunately. Oh no. Good checkpoint. It's, it's perfectly in between me and the banshees. Classic. So we need, Sorry, we continue need to hijack this banshee um, to fly through the hospital. And that's not only fast, but it also skips spawns. Um, so we don't have to fight nearly anything in there. And then we're going to be using it to sort of glitch back out of the hospital. And that'll put us right out front. Um, it's a bit complicated, but we'll see. Uh, We'll see how it goes. And I got a first try, which is very, very rare for me. But yeah, let's go. He's also going to be calling in a evac right here, so that when he gets teleported back out, he'll have a new Falcon. Overall, getting this objective first is what you want. So uh, the rest of the level should go pretty smoothly. We've just kind of bitten some time loss due hey. to not getting a single good Banshee spawn. About that night vision. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we fly all the way to the objective in here. We wait a little bit, and then we're going to be getting back in our vehicle. And since the game thinks we're in a vehicle, it thinks we're outside, and it's going to deload this interior. Um, and then if we hop out, uh, it's going to say, oh, wait, you're not supposed to be in here. And it puts you right outside. you want to explain like the random objectives so right so the random objectives we got one already our main mission um and there's two other main missions uh and those are going to be random between the two as well and then in between those main missions we're going to have side objectives which there's 12 of them um and we really don't want to get maybe half of these objectives Fuck. yeah they're all a lot of them are pretty rough on legendary we got a pretty nice one though, uh, second try. The first try was Gunnery Sergeant Buck, which is an escort mission that takes like two minutes. Uh, the music's cool, but yeah, yeah. It's the best objective to get casually and the worst when you're speedrunning. Now, I have Marines, and if my Marines see me killing other Marines, they'll throw a hissy fit and end my speedrun. So I'm gonna just wait until the snipers take out the Marines. And then that's the fastest way to finish the objective. Yeah, so for this objective, we have to clear out the marines and the enemies to go as fast as possible. Other objectives are just Super taking down. out the enemies, uh, and then there's some that's just taking out the marines. Um, but uh, obviously the fastest ones are 
where you just have to clear out enemies and you don't have to worry about getting uh, marine aggro, friendly aggro. And classic, I got the furthest away objective from <laughs> literally like Oscar as a side objective, Oscar 19 versus uh, Viren Tower as the main objective. It's like the longest <laughs> straight line on the map, I'm pretty sure. But we're good thanks to diagonal flying. Uh, if you fly diagonally, you just go really fast, faster than flying forward, so. Yeah, it basically little combines the, set a little bit. The, the sideways velocity with the forward velocity, and that was uh, changed in a recent patch, so a few few world records got updated because of that. Oh yeah, shout to DICE here, who has both world records on this level. It is a pain in the butt, but it's also such a comfy level to run. Yeah, if you lose your own, it's not your fault, it's just... It's RNG. You didn't roll the right dice. Maybe that's why you're so good at this mission, dice. <laughs> Maybe. Do you know the chance of perfect, like, mission objective order? Off the top the... of your head? Yes, it's... okay. So, if you're playing craps, and you're trying to get snake eyes... Um, imagine playing craps, but you're trying to get three snake eyes. It's essentially the same thing. You have to land three ones um and it's a one in 216 chance of that happening <laughs> yeah and, and on legendary it's three times that because <laughs> your first objective is also random so it's like 600 and some oh, okay we got a little more expansion we got the jammer i can actually oh God, skip if i shoot that phantom enough but i'm not gonna go for it because it's very Aww. scary to go for from that objective so I'm just going to try and clear out some of these Banshees to make this area more safe. And then I'll kill this when it drops the enemies. You want to explain Jammer Skip Dice? So Jammer Skip is uh, still kind of un unknown of exactly why it works. But essentially we have to shoot at the mobile Jammer that this Phantom is going to drop. And that spawns in right after the Phantom spawns. So if we, if we notice the Phantom spawning and shoot at it and get just the right timing to do enough damage to the jammer inside of it, it it will skip this entire objective because it thinks oh you already pressed this button and then you don't have to sit here taking out all these enemies you don't have to land and hop out um, and it's if it's not obvious that is the quickest mission if you do get the jammer skip because it, it basically spawns and then you're done with it yeah and there's actually a variation of the trick called dmr jammer skip where you just stand in this building uh, wait for it to spawn, fire two DMR shots, and bang, you're done. You get dialogue. It's black magic. I don't know how it works, but <laughs> Dice does it to get world record. That was a really fun one figuring out. <laughs> how did uh, you even figure that out? Like, what p compelled you to say, hey, I'm just going to try shooting this with a DMR? Um, <laughs> so... Just sits here. So we eventually figured out that we just... Bam, bam. Eventually we figured out with, that we just had to shoot it with the Falcon. And so then I was like, maybe I can just shoot it with other guns. Um, <laughs> and then after enough random tries, I finally got one where I got the dialogue and then narrowed down the timing from that. Sweet. A uh, good time for a donation, by the way. Night Perfect vision. stuff, thank you. Well, I would like to take this quick opportunity to talk to you about the incentives that we have available here at ESA Winter 21. If you do decide to donate to this great cause that we're raising money for, you can put your money towards uh, many of the upcoming games that are coming up equally as good as this one that you're seeing right now. For example, uh, we have Cyberpunk 2077 coming up, and you can decide the starting path. I mean, do you prefer Corpo, Street Kid, or uh, the other one? <laughs> so definitely do check it out. Check out the incentives that we have available. Again, we have a massive incentive coming up for the Big John uh, I believe the, the, it is called the Wacky World of Miniature Golf Cutscene Percent. Get your donations in if you want to see that. I definitely do. Alright, so uh, this final objective, you want to explain this dice? Um, yeah, so we're going to be trying to shoot one of these phantoms out of the air before it drops off uh, either of its turrets. And that basically skips one turret drop. Um, and then we're going to fly around to the other turrets that are being dropped off by other phantoms and take them all out so that our pelicans can evacuate from our Oni Tower. Yeah, we got it. So I thanks to doing that... Up. Sorry? No, I was saying I love seeing phantoms blow up. It's great. Yeah, it looks great. And we're going to be seeing a lot more of that in the speedrun in the next level. 
since we get that phantom kill, we can basically spawn kill the rest of them and not lose any time. Uh, assuming I don't get blown out of the sky by a million banshees. Yeah, your radar looks pretty clean. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, it's it's not quite a seclusive radar. The, the fastest speed run of this category of all time was lost to just RNG. There was a million banshees in the wrong place at the wrong time. But we're through the RNG fest level. On to the and not quite as RNG fest level. Yeah. Seclusive, you want to explain uh, what yeah, we're about so to do here? Package is the next level coming up. It's a pretty cool level, if you ask me personally. So, oh, you're doing hybrid, aren't you? I am, So yeah. there's a, yeah. So there's a Spoilers. tank you meant to take. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> there's a, you might remember this is the tank level. There's a, there's a bunch of enemies and a bunch of shades in the first area. There's also a ghost that's conveniently placed here that we can just grab and run with it. And then there's a, a tank. The IL strat and some people, full, some people's full game strat, it's like a, you know, optional strat. It's just to go without it and go with the ghost and the revenant and just drive through all the enemies and hope you live. It's a very risky strat. You'll do too easy. You'll see too easy do like half of it. You'll take out the heavier enemies with the oh wow one bar. <laughs> I'm waiting for a checkpoint. Oh my god. Woo! All right. Can, sorry. Continue. No, no. There we go. <laughs> You'll take out the the heavy, heavy enemies like turrets and vehicles with the tank and then drive in the ghosts and oh rather right, right since it moves faster. And then he'll drive into the section after that, which is also another bullet held bit. There's two fuel red shades, two regular shades, and two revies and a ghost. So it's you need to do some very precise driving through some rocks to not live. It, it's really cool to watch. The, the strats developed by our friend Dice. And seclusive. We we spent a couple days on this. And it used to be a segmented strat. It was being developed just for segmented, and then we said, wait, this is actually kind of IL viable. And then Seclusive started doing it in full game as well. Yeah, <laughs> it's got a full game world recce with it in it. And then everyone kind of started doing it. I, I just I hate I the tank. Everything. <laughs> I hate taking the tank in this section. Uh, so I just like taking the Revenant and Night Vision off. I, I bet you two at dice. <laughs> so I usually do a lot of this game in Night Vision and I'm trying... <laughs> I'm gonna go for this uh, DLC health pack that no one knew was here. Hey, the too easy health pack. <laughs> the only risk with taking that health back is it delays this kill a little bit and you might get banshees tailing you so you might lose this checkpoint here hopefully not i mean this, this checkpoint is random anyway There's yeah let's go banshees and they can get nice. really bad sidelines on you yeah it's dice trying to use his commentator's curse card but not today <laughs> man it looks like Kay. he's doing tankless really well here until the revy tried to block me off but we should be fine I really want the turrets to blow themselves up. Hopefully they will do that. So many bullets. Oh no. Oh, the road is behind you. Oh, is he behind you? Oh man. And there's a bench, dude. Cool, that's why we that's why hybrid strats are so good. You get a plasma pistol that you don't usually have here. Um that's why I grabbed the tank at the beginning. I really want this guy to look at me. Okay, he you got him. We should be able to get a checkpoint now. I really want a checkpoint. Come on, be kind, game. Alright, let's go. We also got two stickies, so this is looking good. So, what he'll do in this area is he will run up the center of the maintenance shaft, like up the slope in a way that delays the enemy spawns, and then he'll just run past the enemies as they spawn, which startles them. So they have like an animation of where they're like, oh man, it's an enemy, oh man, I better re my head and not shoot, and then he'll just run past and nade them. And then after that, it's the hardest trick in the game. He waited there for just a couple seconds so that um, a few enemies can walk by, and he doesn't have to deal with them as he jumps up here. And then he's going to jump over this corner so that these enemies spawn in a bit later. Very Who found that, the, by the way? The corner cut? That was me. Yeah. Nice. Of course it was. <laughs> so this is the hardest trick in the game. It's not actually, but we like to call it that. Especially when you forget your sprint. Uh, okay. Yeah. You got that AI minute. Oh, I didn't want... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, you just need to keep running. We call it statue jump because you jump off the statue. You just need to keep I running. I forgot it again. And okay. Alright, let's do it properly this time. You might have noticed whenever he gets shot when he's sprinting, he gets slowed down, slowed down drastically. And this is a kind of tight jump anyway, so you don't want to get slowed down at all. Yeah. Which makes this kind of RNG. But hey, you got it. Is that a 428? Nice. Not bad, not bad. Now it's coming up to the cave fight section, which is a very long section, very combat heavy. Lots of waves, lots of vehicles. So this this part of the run has changed a lot in the in the recent years. We used to get a wraith, which is a covenant tank. Oh yeah, you saw it. You saw it. Not we used to get a, a wraith from the first wave and let some phantoms from the first wave fly away as well, and then cross map some phantoms and use it like use the the wraith's heavy shot to take out the ghost, and also all the hunters in the next wave. However, on easy lines and also nails started taking out all the phantoms with just a banshee, and then nails uh, by nails was his tag on Halo runs. Started to take out all the phantoms with a banshee on legendary, and then everyone's like, "Wait a minute, this strat's really good." So it turns out it saves about three minutes over the raid strat. And you want to talk about turrets, like why I'm turning them on? Oh yeah, so it's turning on the turrets because one, it helps just for the enemies. There are a lot of enemies to clear here, and two, for every turret you turn on, the the time that a phantom will take to spawn is slightly shortened. From like if you have four turrets up, they'll take three seconds, and three turrets will take five seconds, and it goes up from there. To 10 and 20. Most people don't actually know you can blow up these phantoms or never try. I guess yeah, the engines as the key. Yeah. The engines on the right and left do double damage. I mean, even if even with double damage, they have a ton of health, like twice as much as Halo 3 phantoms. You've seen yeah, Halo 3 before. phantoms. You just like sneeze on them and they'll blow up. Night vision. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Halo 3, it takes like what? Four rockets, three rockets, three rockets yeah, three to the engine. Uh, uh, in reach, it's yeah. like eight. It's eight or yeah. a full weight Spartan laser. So yeah, uh, is killing these phantoms because you know, by having the phantoms dead, the waves that they will spawn, like each phantom will spawn more than one wave. It's not just they spawn one and just leave. They will spawn a bunch of them. Killing them obviously prevents them from spawning it, and also. The game will wait for all the phantoms to fly away and despawn off the map before they spawn in the next set of phantoms for the next wave. But if the phantoms are, you know, destroyed, the game's like, oh, the phantoms are gone, sweet, you can spawn in the next wave. So, the next wave will spawn immediately after meeting the quota of two enemies here. Also, the phantom spawn order is quite important. He got a pretty good spawn here, almost optimal. You want the one you attack first to spawn first, obviously. And then the, the phantom you attack second, if it spawns a bit later, like a late second or early third, you can get a lot of its drops with the explosion as well, because phantom explosions do a lot of damage. Also, we're killing this one first every wave, because the walk from where the enemies drop out of there to the nearest turret is a long way, and often, you know, they'll take a long time to die, which is not very speedrunner-like when we're speedrunners. Oh, yeah, that Banshee exists as well. Very pesky. So, on this wave, it's kind of important to take out this middle phantom, because if you kill it fast enough, its last wave won't drop, and that'll interrupt... Or actually, it'll carry over into the next wave's phantom. Um, so, the next wave phantom will stick around longer, and that gives you more opportunity to kill it as well. Yeah, the... The middle phantom in next wave is the only phantom in this whole wave fight that spawns one wave, one wave, and then just leaves immediately. So killing it is you have to do it very quick, and it saves you know a little bit of time. It's quite nice. It's very difficult. Oh no! So many things alive. Yeah. Yeah, you're you don't have seats are on. Yeah. I'll get it now. And the music's changed, which helps me. I didn't know this until today, because I don't play with music on usually. But I'm going to now for, the, for this level. The music indicated that the next final wave is coming in. Did you know that's occlusive? Uh, I, I did, yeah, but... I mean, Alright. <laughs> sorry. Looks like you got an okay spot. Nothing surprises this man. <laughs> you can go for the phantom killer if he gets it. Yeah, I'll go for Hunter Phantom, why not? Shout out to my dog Hunter. Yeah, who is, um, Hunter. This trick is named after. <laughs> Obviously. 
<laughs> yeah, we, yeah. Not because it's got hunters in it or anything. If he gets this kill, that's kind of big. Sometimes it. Okay, let's go. That's so good. Nice. It was just taking very, off. Very nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. You saw it just start to fly away. Marty McDon uh, Marty O'Donnell's pretty happy too. Those those drums are going heavy now. <laughs> I, this is like one of my first times playing doing the speed run with the music on. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it actually. Uh this banshee really wants me. Not opting to splatter these enemies because brutes can armor lock and they do it kind of unpredictably. That's the dialogue we want. Yeah, they have, they have like, infinite armor lock and no cooldown, really. And also, just getting close to enemies when your banshees are a bit damaged is kind of an unsafe option on Legendary. With risk of... yeah, now and this is the final phantom. phantom. Yeah. All we have to do is blow this up and the level ends. Oh, you can do a donation break. If you have any. Uh, absolutely. Um, well, let me ask you this too easy. What would you say is your favorite Halo game of all time? Um, uh, I love Halo too much, I can't answer. Uh, I love the <laughs> gameplay of Halo 3 ODST and Halo Reach, and the story of Halo 2, and the music of ODST especially. I knew you would have a good answer for it. <laughs> I did want to ask anybody who is watching, what is your favorite Halo game of all time? Send a donation through and let Too Easy know how correct or incorrect his opinion is on Halo. Let us know, absolutely. There are no correct opinions on Halo games. They're all good. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're coming into the final level now, Pillar of Autumn, uh, which shares the name of the first level of Bungie's first Halo game and the last level of Bungie's last Halo game. Uh, now this level, we see a mountain at the beginning, which is the same mountain from the opening cinematic, uh, in which you see your cracked, broken helmet. Uh, it's Bungie telling us that we're moving closer to our goal and closer to our inevitable death. Um, pretty sad, but we've got a job to do. We're carrying very important information which uh, Cortana, who's on the Pillar of Autumn, she needs this information. It's being carried by a clone of herself, who's been used to study the foreigner ship underneath uh, in that snowy section in the last level. We need to get this data so that they can go do Halo CE, basically. So, um, yeah, no, if anyone ties, tries to talk down on Halo Reach, you know, it wouldn't be, none of the, none of the other games would be possible without it. So, uh, Halo Reach's story is good, and you can't prove me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> So we grabbed that conk at the start, that concussion rifle, um, because we're going to be doing more of those uh, sort of grenade jump boosts that are basically required on Legendary. Um, and with our extra ammo, we're going to be just saving time in general with... One uh, sec, sorry. Did I grab rockets? Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm, pr yeah. I'm pretty sure you did. I'm pretty sure you did. Okay, sorry. Continue, dice. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we're going to use this conk um, just to go fast in general and avoid a lot of enemies and then also do some spawn skips. Um, and then we're going to bring those rockets that we picked up all the way to the end of the mission um, to spawn kill a lot of enemies that are dropping out of phantoms. A cool thing about this mission, the reason it's my favorite level to speedrun, is that the speedrun is the canonically accurate way to play it. Uh, your objective in this mission is just get to their Pillar of Autumn as fast as possible. You don't need to kill anything along the way. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, so this next section is full of a bunch of enemies. They've put down a roadblock for us. Uh, we're going to just go straight through them. Well, around them. You'll see. Is it is it really a speedrun if you're just playing it as intended? True, actually. This level is not a speedrun. We're just playing it as intended. Speedrun's over, folks. So you'll use the same mechanic here as you did at the start of Exodus by making suicide grunts unable to path to him, and they'll just explode, which is nice. Yeah, there goes all those guys, and we're through the roadblock, thanks to this uh, trusty concussion rifle. Oh yeah, so this is the drone skip. It's a pretty, pretty easy trick. You just jump up on some rocks with a concussion blast, and then you miss a trigger volume, which spawns a whole bunch of drones, which are a pain to deal with, especially on Legendary. Yeah, I mean, you even lose your shields on easy, so this yeah. part would be impossible on Ledge. 
I doubt even segmenting, you could just run past the enemies here. How many drones spawn? Like, 20? Yeah, like 20. It's a lot. I'm using the concussion rifle to boost myself through because I don't really need uh, the full concussion rifle. I will not be using the, doing the very common speedrun strat where we concussion rifle boost up to the mech cannon early. I'll be uh, using my rockets. Uh, my commentators will give you the lowdown. Yeah, there's a common speedrun strat that most runners do in full game is uh, they use the concussion rifle to jump up to the mech cannon. So and you can destroy phantoms with one shot. And obviously, destroying phantoms is helpful because, like we saw in package, where there's no phantoms, there's no enemies. But uh, that's that's kind of slow. Too easy is not slow. It's just on the ground fighting them all as they drop out of the dropships. Yeah, we'll just blow some stuff up and hope yeah, for the best. You know. Last level of the game, like hardest bit on Legendary here, yeah, no worries. Yeah. This is the Boneyard, um, chock full with a bunch of enemies. But Bungie wanted to give you the op option to just run straight on through, and that's exactly what we do. Uh, we're playing as intended right now. Let's go. I hope I don't get those shot are, here. Oh, those are unstrange grunt spawns. Yeah, I've never seen that grunt spawn, and I've played this level like 1500 times, so that's some weird stuff, but I with her. <laughs> I swear it's a patch thing that happened to me like a few times yesterday. So this is another hunter skip, except it's not its not uh, fundamentally the same as the one in Oni. We just skipped the spawn trigger. I'm gonna hope that these enemies all walk forward. Uh, they're really not walking forward. This is spooky. I'm gonna just... Everyone, please be quiet. I don't want them to hear me. All right, thanks for being quiet. You can talk now. We're good. All right. <laughs> so similar but to delete. Drone skip. Oh yeah, but they don't do any damage. If you go fast, if you go slow, they do full legendary damage. But yeah, it's very weird. Lots of things on this level are very odd, like that and jackals dropping stickies. He has to go oh, back yeah. to hit the door there to progress the level because he skipped the hunter trigger. By the way. Yeah, POA, it feels like it's on a different build of the game. There's a bunch of weird stuff, you know, like our seclusive alluded to. There's also an elite up here who doesn't have a backsmack hitbox. And um, one day I was just doing ILs of this level and I tried to backsmack him like six times and I lost like six runs to trying to backsmack him and just, he just wouldn't die. Uh, and I said in, I said in our, our chat like, hey, this guy doesn't have a backsmack hitbox. No one believed me. Uh, I didn't believe myself either. I thought I was just bad. So I said, hey, I'll sub to the first person who can backsmack this guy. And poor Mankey spent like 45 minutes trying to backsmack him. He's another <laughs> speedrunner. And he couldn't do it, and he proved it was impossible, and I gave him the sub anyway, because I felt so bad, because... <laughs> yeah, luck luckily I'm just going to grab the needle rifle and try to scare this guy away. He's very, very, very scared of these little pink uh, blamite rounds, so... We're just yeah, gonna so go right Similarly through. to how brutes would dodge an armor lock nades and needles, the elite ultras have a similar strat. Except they, you know, dive and duck and dodge. Uh, you used your frag. No, ah, that's fine. I, I, I don't usually, I usually save the frag oh, here that, anyway. Yeah, no, that's right. My bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, a boomer. <laughs> um, you can use a frag here to get to the enemies earlier and save a rocket. But since I have full rockets, um, it, it's fine. I can afford to use two rockets on these enemies here. So the goal of this entire fight is spawn killing as many enemies as possible and hopefully we'll get a few more plasma grenade drops to make that happen it's so much easier. Looking good. And then we're going to come up and get the sniper rifle and try and take out enemies from very far away. Because if you get close... Shout out to Pedregas. Oh, sorry. Shout out to Pedregas for developing these strats. Uh, sorry, continue, Dice. Yeah, if you get close to these two phantoms, the uh, turrets on the front will just light you up, and there's really no way to survive it. <laughs> no rocket kills, unfortunately. That is very unfortunate. But we just got wow. four shots, four kills. <laughs> Let's go. Is it insane? <laughs> uh, I want to clean everything well. else up. So I can try and get... Is there anything else? Uh, a sequence there's, break, but it looks like it's not happening. Like, yeah. You can get a, a, a trick with key skip, which is the same as um, skip and Oni. You kill the enemies before the other enemies drop out of their ship, and the game thinks everything's dead. But it's 
very hard. To, it's basically RNG, especially on ledge. And you need to kill the enemies immediately, which is also RNG. My DMR. Okay, it didn't deload. I wish I had a needle rifle instead of a DMR. I accidentally picked up the DMR, it looks like. Somewhere along the way. Muscle memory from ILs where I do pick up the DMR. Uh, so this is a bit scuffed. I'm just going to try to clear these enemies up. As soon as I kill enough, I won't have to kill the rest of them. That's enough. Oh, this guy's scary. Okay, I have the loadout I need and full health. So I'm just going to hide until Keys arrives. Captain Keys, you might remember him from Halo CE. He's the guy who gets his, he gets his skull caved in by Master Chief. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember that guy. Spoilers. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> It's actually the guy with the magnum with no bullets. True, he doesn't keep it loaded, son. You have to find ammo as you go. Alright. Now, since we're not doing the concussion rifle strats, we don't get to go straight to the mech cannon. We have to hoof it. And it's pretty scary. I might try to do it fast once, and then I'll just... If it doesn't work, I'll just kill everything. Okay, these grunts heavily trolled. So, I'm getting an early checkpoint. And a grunt alive. I'm gonna play this safe. Definitely. Oh wow, yeah, they're right up in there. Whew. Yeah, I'm just gonna full clear this bit. Where is the engineer? Engineer, man. Hello. Oh, there he is. So he'll give shields to the enemies, which we don't want. Oh, I just wasted my grenade. That's okay. Oh. Okay, this is a uh, one bullet in the clip. Reload and try getting before the shields come back up. Oh no! I'm gonna get this health back. This is a big battle. These guys are called the servants of the abiding truth. Truth, and they are crack covenant troops. They're basically the best of the best. I'm gonna try and not get shot to death by this guy. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. This is some scary stuff. Ah, yeah, that hit me. Okay, yeah. Unfortunate. Ooh. I think that was PB pace as well, but that's okay. Uh, I don't, I don't think so. Actually, I don't know how long your loads are. <laughs> Might as well attempt the fast right now, right? Nah, checkpoint's way too far away. Nah. Uh, engineer. This is kind of the worst weakness of doing the combat strats. Is there's no fast way to get back up. Well, there is one. Yeah, <laughs> but that checkpoint it's... got ruined. Yeah. Okay, he's grenading himself. Come on. You know you want to. Checkpoint. Okay, man. What a really bad POA to cap off a kind yeah, of good that, run. That ending was super awkward. Mm. That, it never, almost never goes like that. Yeah. Oh well. So now it's just a one, yeah. one minute 15 auto scroller. So, so I'd uh, like to take this uh, moment yeah, yeah, to shout yeah. out the Halo speedrunning community. Um, especially the Halo, speed, Halo Reach speedrunning community because I picked up this game less than a year ago with no prior experience speedrunning at all. And uh, thanks to all the tutorials and helpful community members like Dyson Seclusive here, uh, you know, they're so helpful. Uh, there's a Discord, Halo Runs Discord, with a lot of resources for learning it, every single one of the Halo speedruns. So definitely check out haloruns.com for all your Halo speedrunning needs if you're remotely interested in it. That's a 12.10, so I'm going to go at 12.40. Otherwise, anything you guys uh, want to say? Shout out to Pedro Gas and Wolfie. We we mentioned yeah. Pedro Gas before, but yeah, those two have been like the pioneers of Halo Reach Legendary for the last like five years. So yeah, they made we it. Wouldn't, very we wouldn't easy. have all the strats. We wouldn't have all the strats and all the times today without them. They made it very easy to me, join a long time ago, and it, it's been so comfy. Unfortunately, Wolfie hasn't been running that much, but the community's still around and very thankful for him. 
Okay, I got. Uh, well, we got more time oh. to talk. Let's go. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, dice. Uh, anyone else you want to shout out? <laughs> that is so unfortunate. Oh my. Um, man, I. I... <laughs> Uh, but by the way, there's nothing he could have done about that. There's yeah, just a, a uh, random chance he'll die to a Banshee Bomb or a Phantom or... Really rough. But yeah, I'd, li uh, I'd like to uh, really thank ESA for having me. This is the first time uh, Halo Reach speedrun has been at ESA. And I'm really happy to, to be here, basically. It's been really fun. Um, and big big ups to everyone who's donated for Alzheimer Fondin. That's uh, 53, I'm going to go it. I think 54, call it 54. Uh, for me, uh, I, I joined quite late, so for me, the two bigger figures for me were um, Nails and Mankey, so I want to shout out them as well, who also done a lot for Halo Reach Legendary. What did I say, 53? Not yet, sorry. Uh, I'll call out. Very soon. It'll be as we destroy the, uh, the Covenant Cruiser up above us. Second try. Okay, yeah, uh, time. Time. 125 RTA, that's like a 122 or something, right? Yeah, that would have been a 120 without the POA yeah. shenanigans, but yeah, very, very thank you run. so much for having us. Yeah, that was an absolutely incredible showcase. Thank you to Too Easy for running that extremely difficult, a lot harder than it looks, speedrun. And Dyson Seclusive for that incredible commentary. We really do appreciate it. We did have a few donations come in there for that speedy conclusion. We have $5 from Cyprius Kane saying, Because you begged, I'm going to say REITs, ODST, a close second. And we have a $10 donation from Tunguska saying great run and commentary shout outs to all the halo runners in the chat right now p.s halo 2 vista is the best halo game hands down <laughs> i think we will all agree on that won't we so with that in mind thank you everybody again so much for watching this absolutely incredible showcase of halo rates we have a link to the past zelda coming up now uh we're just gonna have a quick intermission don't go anywhere we'll be right back